let's rumble. Key primaries are taking place today in Alaska, Arizona, and Florida. Will we see another referendum on Washington, D.C., or can the incumbents hang on to their seats? Joining us now for a little radio rumble, Neil Asbury, radio talk show host based in Coral Gables, Florida, which is beautiful. Tom Hartman, radio talk show host based in Portland, Oregon, we hear is also nice. And Charles Goyette, longtime Phoenix talk show host and author of the New York Times bestseller, The Dollar Meltdown. First to you, Neil Asbury. Tell me about Florida right now. We see the big switch we know with Charlie Chris going, okay, I can't win, but I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go independent. What does that mean for today? Well, first and foremost, um, we want to feel good again. And I think that's here in Florida, and I think it's all over the country. I mean, enough is enough already. We want to get our mojo back as a country. And the first step to getting our mojo back is job creation. And that's what we're hearing all over the uh, airwaves in Florida right now is job creation. You know, everything uh, that uh, has been going on lately can really be put down to that. Uh, the stimulus is jobs failure, Obamacare, cap and trade, car check, is job killers, uh, what I call morphine economics, this huge debt that we're creating. Uh, turning our, our currency into vapor paper is jobs inhibitors. So everybody seems to claim right now that they got the answer to jobs, but obviously the incumbents have a hard argument ahead of themselves, Brian. Tom Hardman, do you find the same thing in Portland? Absolutely, and across the nation. The, as long as the incumbents continue to hew to Reaganomics and Clintonomics, particularly the free trade version of it that says, oh, it's just fine to ship our jobs over to China. Somehow we'll figure out how to make a new industry out of, do you want fries with that? Uh, American workers are getting screwed, and they know it. And there's a, a growing rage on both the right and the left that I agree is coming in large part out of the fact that people don't have jobs. And you don't bring up stimulus, even if you're a Democrat anymore. Uh, Charles, we know what's happening in Phoenix. We know everyone was talking about uh, immigration. Is it at the point where that superseded job talk? Oh, yes. It's on uh, on the airwaves, on TV and radio all day. Last minute flurry uh, yesterday here in Arizona. It's all about the border, and that takes our puts our attention on the uh, McCain-Hayworth race. It looked early on like J.D. Hayworth had a chance challenging John McCain. But it shows you once again that, that money is the mother's milk of politics. He had a lot of money, McCain did, left over from the presidential race, and he has reinvented himself. He's a reborn uh, border hawk and uh, hands-down favorite to win this one pretty big. Now, it's amazing, too, at the age of 74, with him on the record on so many issues, taking the lead in so many controversial ways. After running for president, did the people of Arizona bought the move to the right as an authentic switch? Does that surprise you? Well, it does. It perpetually surprises me. It surprises me, actually, that the people in Arizona believe either one of these men are fiscal conservatives. I mean, John McCain could have been elected president. If you remember when he suspended his presidential yep. race and he went to that summit about the uh, stimulus package, if he had said no to the $700 billion bailout bill, he'd have probably been elected. But both of these guys have been in Washington growing the federal budget. Uh, J.D. Hayworth has been the towel boy of the Republican House leadership all these years. And yet, the, the people in Arizona buy the advertising that they're, they're really fiscally responsible. Neither one of them really have been. Neil, who's singing that song? For example, when you have Charlie Crist, who we see the reports are over in, um, over in Florida that says that he was a po he's a popular governor, and then he hugs the president, he's been unable to shake that hug to the point where he had to leave his party. Well, uh, Brian, that was a kiss of death. I mean, that wasn't that wasn't a hug. That was a kiss of death. And uh, uh, certainly uh, Marco Rubio has drilled that home. But it's uh, again getting back to how are we going to get the small businesses of America engaged again? How are we going to get American entrepreneurialism back going again? Uh, you know, Florida is suffering. The whole country is suffering. And I think uh, Charlie Crist, being an incumbent, is got to live on that record of uh, of this anxiety that's out there right now. So I think uh, Marco Rubio, uh, who's been on my show a few times, uh, a great American, he has a different idea. He has a different agenda. And I believe that Americans are saying right now, enough is enough. You've had your chance. It's time to go in a different direction. You know, if I was running for uh, office right now, right. I would have jobs tattooed to my forehead. Right. And I think that that's what that's happening right now. Yeah, we just want to see some answers rather than a will. 
willingness to do anything. We just want to see a program that will be effective. Neil Asprey, Tom Hartman, and Charles Goyette, thanks so much for sharing your expertise on what America's thinking. Uh, meanwhile, I want to find Thank out you. what Thank you, uh, great job to all three of you. I want to find out what, uh, what Dana and Steve are thinking. We're thinking that that was a great radio rumble, Brian. Oh, thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Mm -hmm.